I'm on my phone, so excuse any mistakes. Keyboard warriors, I swear this story is real. You can't make this shit up. When I was around 11 years old, around 2014, my family and I had just moved from Tennessee to Texas as my dad was working out a deal for a new job. My brother and I were homeschooled at this time, which meant we could move in with my aunt and uncle with no problems relating to finding a house in a good school district, but that's beside the point. My family was pretty close back then, and all of the cousins got along just fine. We loved to do everything together, especially me and my female cousin Peyton. My immediate family, meaning me, mom, dad, brother and sister, had spent the past seven years without a jack in the box. It was terrible. We were all born in Texas, so we loved it. But living in Tennessee, we had to go without it. A particular night, however, all of our parents had gone out to dinner and told us very specifically to not leave the house. We were to lock the doors after they left and play games or something. You might be thinking, this is now becoming about an intruder, but I promise you this, this is 10 times more bizarre. After the parents left, all of my cousins got together and we decided that we wanted ice cream and candy. Not that it's important, but I remember Ben and Jerry's being the main target. So we devised our foolproof plan to sneak out and acquire the goods. Well, we thought it was foolproof. My older sister, the driver, my cousin Peyton and I loaded into my dad's car that was left at the house, and off we were to get the food. We should not have even left. On our way to the store to get snacks, we decided that Jack in the Box sounded much better than some sugar, so off we went. The drive was full of Bruno Mars and Megan Trainer. How perfect does that sound for 2014? As we pulled up to the drive through we decided that it was about three cars too long and that we would just go inside and order instead. Wrong choice. When we stepped inside, there was one girl in the restaurant. She was short with a small figure and wearing winter clothes, so she looked completely ready for an outing. The girl asked the cashier for a water cup and proceeded to fill it with either Sprite or some other soda. I remember the guy at the register looking at her extremely confused, but it was late at night and he could not care less, I'm pretty sure. When she finished filling up her cup, she drank it extremely quickly and started to turn around to throw the cup out and leave. I have an awful memory, but I do remember her big eyes being wide open as if she had seen something scary. At this point, we had been standing at the entrance doors for the entire interaction just watching. For whatever reason, we were just being very nosy. But as she was walking out, I looked down and noticed that she was gripping a large butcher's knife. You guys... This thing was huge. Immediately, my heart dropped and I heard my cousin go, Oh my god, no way, no way, no way, or something like that. So the knife-wielding girl leaves the restaurant and we go on to order our food, talking about it to the guy at the register and kind of laughing it off, but also still very curious and confused. As we leave our food, we see the girl crossing the street to the CVS. Now, it was kind of late, but there were still a good number of cars driving on this road at that time. She did not look either way. She just crossed with ease as if invincible. We brushed it off and assumed that she was just doing her own thing. 
But after a while of eating some tacos and talking about how fun it was to be out without permission, we saw maybe a dozen police lights start to enter the CVS parking lot. Like I said before, we were nosy, so we decided to do what any nosy person does, investigate. We drove over to the CVS and we were stopped in the parking lot by an officer to be asked a couple of questions. My memory gets a bit hazy here, but I remember it was a problem because my cousin and I were both minors at that time, or something about being minors and involving ourselves with the police was a problem. They asked us a couple of questions, and I just remember my sister and cousin explaining that we had seen a girl wielding a knife in the jack-in-the-box across the street. So with that, they let us go, and we hurried back home. A little bit later that night, when everyone, parents included, was winding down for bed, our mothers called the three of us into one of the rooms in the house to talk about something. I don't think any of us realized that they knew what we did. They sat us down and calmly asked us what we did tonight. And I think we lied, but I don't quite remember. Either way, it was useless. Because they knew everything, even when we did not know. Our moms told us that someone on Facebook had posted about three heroic girls that knew information about the girl in the situation that I'm about to explain to you. Heroic? Hardly. All we did was answer a few questions. Nosy? That's more like it. They told us that the girl had entered the CVS and grabbed a woman by the hair and proceeded to hold the knife to her throat for several minutes before the police could show up. Apparently, people had tried to get her off, but it was useless. After all, she had the weapon. The girl was also apparently screaming and just being very violent. But as that was so many years ago, I can't remember much detail. I know that's not an end-of-the-world nail-biter story, but how bizarre is that? To this day, I think about how easily it could have been one of us with a knife to the throat in a Fort Worth jack-in-the-box, or how easily someone could have been killed. But also, if it wasn't for the girl, we would have gotten through the night with our foolproof plan. So hey, jack-in-the-box knife girl, let's not meet again. Also, we never got candy or ice cream, only PTSD. My cousin and I laugh about this all the time and refer to it as our witness protection program moment. Cautionary tale about giving strangers rides ahead. About 10 years ago, I was on my way to work and made my usual stop at the speedway to grab a Red Bull. I made this stop about every day, so it was a routine for me. But on this day, however, I was already about 15 minutes late for work, but whipped into the gas station anyway. As I got out, there was a clearly strung out girl pacing by the entrance with a baby stroller. I assumed this lady was going to approach me when I got out of the car to ask me for money to buy food. You know, Midwest is filled with dope heads. So, I braced myself for the awkward encounter and headed in. What happened instead is that the lady bolted in front of me with her flip phone and stroller in hand and started begging me for a ride up the road. I declined initially, but she would not fuck off. I get past her and buy my Red Bull and head to the car. As I get to my car, she reappears from behind my car and starts begging again. This time, she flashes a photo of her baby 
on her phone and tells me that she just needs to be dropped off up the road. And I say, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm already late for work. She hops in the back seat with her now clearly empty stroller and instructs me to drive towards the bypass, which is close to my work. As we drive, she keeps telling me to just go straight every time that I ask how much further it is. We're now well away from the city and it's all country roads now. I lose my patience and very firmly tell her that she needs to either give me an address or get out of my car. She throws $3 in my passenger seat and begs me to just turn on to this random gravel road. I turn down it and notice the only thing in the road is a beat-up Corsica blocking half of the gravel path. I instantly pull off to the side and tell her to get the fuck out now. She begs to just take her down to the Corsica because it's her boyfriend and he has her kid. I tell her that if that's true, then he can drive down the road and pick her up. She tacks on her phone for a second and without another word, just hops out. I'm officially sketched out and flip a bitch just to see in the rear view that the Corsica was hauling ass behind me and the lady is gone and it's turning onto the bypass opposite of me. I ended up calling in since I was running about 30 minutes late after everything. My grammar is trash, but I'm 100% certain that I was about to be robbed by crackheads or worse. Between the fake baby photo, empty stroller, and a shady dirt road Corsica, I was pretty shook for a good week. Obligatory. This happened a few years ago when I was a child. My family and I are dirt poor, and not only that, I have horrible social anxiety, especially at the time of this incident. So, because we were so poor, my mother couldn't afford a babysitter, and we had moved away from our family after an abusive past. We live in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, so mom never really worried about crimes or possible criminals. Because of this, she would leave me in the car as she and my siblings went shopping. I had social anxiety, as I said, so I was fine with it and definitely preferred staying in the car. I had a phone, doors locked, yada yada. No need to be worried, we would think. Of course, that was wrong in this instance. I was chilling in the front seat, playing some music on my phone and all of that. I never really paid too much attention to the cars driving by, mostly paid attention to the people that walked just a bit close and would make me nervous. That was until... This old, dark red or purplish, beaten to hell car pulled in front of me. I spared a glance on instinct, and there were two people in the car. A skinny, yet tall man with a stained white shirt, and a bigger, yet again tall, woman. Nothing really out of the ordinary, so no red flags were raised. I just expected them to go on throughout their day and all. I stopped paying attention and went back to my phone. A few minutes later that I had gotten bored from scrolling through social media, I set down my phone and looked up, thinking that I was just going to be staring off into space or something. Nope. What I saw had my heart racing immediately. The two people in the car had, in fact, not going about their day. There they were, sitting just as they were except for one thing. They were staring and smiling at me, not the type of, Oh, <laughs> hey, you saw me, so now I feel I have to give a polite smile. No, 
It was a smile that showed off their yellow rotting teeth and sent chills down to my spine. I immediately freaked out, my anxiety spiking, and I wondered what the hell they were doing. I averted my eyes from them, hoping that they hadn't seen me staring or the panic on my expression. Except, they must have. Suddenly, the beaten car started. After sitting there doing nothing for what must have been five minutes, they started the car. My anxiety went out of control when I spared another glance upwards. The skinny man in the driver's seat was reaching below him, and when he came back up, he had a fucking pocket knife. And not one of those small, easily portable ones. It was huge. The knife was already protruding out, and I panicked, and my flight or fight response kicked in. I didn't even think. I gripped my phone and fucking bolted. I left the car on, keys behind, and everything. I just left. The thing was, the minute I was beginning to make a run for it, their door opened, and it made a long and ear-splitting screech, which was how I knew someone was getting out of the car the minute that I started getting out of mine. I didn't spare a glance. I just ran. Ran and ran until I made it to my mom in the supermarket and told her what happened. She freaked out and because I had left the keys in the car, they decided to go outside to get them. All of me and my siblings came with me. But when we got to the car, the people were gone. No car, nothing. And nothing was stolen either. I had left the car unlocked and running and nothing seemed to be touched. It was a perfect opportunity to steal or rummage through the car. I still don't know what really was going to happen. The parking lot wasn't packed, but it sure was hell wasn't empty either. How were they planning on using that knife? Someone was bound to notice. Still, it had me paranoid for the next few shopping trips, and I always went in with my family after that. When I was a young teen, me and my best friend, let's call her Amy, were babysitting my five-year-old cousin. Here's some contacts. We live in the country on a state route, so there are no sidewalks, and the road is pretty steady with cars a lot of the time. So, there is a convenient store and pizza place about a half mile down the road and is the only store for about 15 miles. We decided to walk to the store along the road to get some snacks and pizza. Now, I have walked to the store a hundred times. We know everyone who lives around us and they don't mind if we walk in their yard. Some people even have tails through their yard to make it easier for the kids to walk to each other's houses. So, me and Amy put my little cousin in a wagon and started to walk to the store. The walk there was fine, and on the way home it started to get dark, but it does not take long to walk home. About halfway home, an old beaten down car pulled over the opposite side of the road that we were on. A clearly drunk man in his 40s with green hair rolled down the window and asked if we knew where the hospital was. I told him how to get there and assumed that he would leave. He didn't. He got out of the car and said that I was lying. He sprinted towards us at full speed. I told Amy to run, but he was on us so fast that we had no time to respond. He grabbed the wagon handle out of Amy's hand and yanked it hard. My cousin went flying back. He then tried to run back to his car with the wagon, with my cousin still in it crying. This all happened in a matter of two minutes. I threw myself on top of my cousin and the wagon because I didn't know what else to do. At that point, 
We were all screaming, and the man that lived at the house that we were in front of came outside with a gun. The green-haired man ran back to his car and took off. We called the police, but nothing ever came of it. I don't know what his intentions were, but I'm sure that they were not good. So, creepy green-haired man, let's not meet again. I opened an account to basically share this story in this forum. I had heard about this site for a bit and thought it would be a good place to share. Anyway, I guess I can start by sharing that I have a twin and that we are very close. We grew up in a small town and almost everyone knew each other, but that doesn't mean it was entirely safe. We were always taught by our parents to be wary of strangers and locking doors or never opening the door to strangers. We often stayed by ourselves after school while our parents worked, so we had plenty of experience staying alone. When we graduated from high school, we moved to the largest city in our state and attended the state university. We left our home but we weren't too worried since we had each other. I guess this is when I share that I don't know what in the hell made us change our perspective on safety when moving to a larger city with greater risk and weirdos. We have had a fair share of weirdos creeping on us, but our stupid asses never locked our doors. The funniest part about this is that we are crazy about horror movies, so we should have known better. Towards our junior and senior year of university, around 2017 to 18, we moved to a cheaper part of the city to save on rent as our part-time jobs at that time only paid so much on campus. It was quiet and was a family area. We had a tall wooden fenced yard so nobody could see in. The place was old, but it was cute and had some character to it. But most importantly, it was cheap and was close to a bus stop. It was an old fourplex and after a year of living there, our security door broke because of the rotting wood and our landlord never got around fixing it despite our request. The front and only door to the apartment was a door with a wooden door with glass, looked like a chocolate bar, and the glass was where those squares are on the bar. I'm sorry, I know that was an awful explanation. Anyway, I often walked home from late night studying at school around 3am by myself. I was very careless, and so was my sister. I suppose we never locked our doors because my sister was so, so forgetful that she would never had her home keys with her, and I did not want to worry about her staying outside for hours until I was out of school or work. We never thought anything could happen to us, and that was only in the movies, right? Which why I will say that it was divine intervention or just crazy luck that for that night, for no real reason, the door of our apartment was locked. It was a Saturday night, and I can't remember too well what happened before the whole ordeal, but I think my sister and I went home after a brief night at a bar, having a beer and walking home together. My sister and I never did have many friends or acquaintances, let alone told the one or two friends we did have where we lived. Partly because we did not have a new or nice place to have anyone over without apologizing. So, when we heard our broken and old wooden gate door open, right next to our bedroom window around 4 a.m., we immediately woke up, not alarmed, but confused. Shortly after, we heard a knock on the door, persistent too, 
Well, my stupid ass sister walks with her eyes wide open straight to the door and puts her hand on the lock and door as she is about to unlock it. I'm right behind her and I'm already seeing red flags. There's a guy in a black hoodie covering his face and hiding his face away from the neighbor's porch light so that we could not see him. It was all happening too fast and we had just woken up so we were thinking it was a rare friend of ours. I just blurted to her to stop. I went to grab my phone in a heartbeat and it was a small apartment too so it wasn't too far. I can hear my sister asking the creepy fuck who he was and he said in a calm voice, Just open up. I saw that he was fiddling with his phone, but I was hiding behind the hallway wall next to the tiny living room area. No! Who are you? Asked my sister. He then proceeded to jiggle the door handle, which I freaked the hell out since our locks were so shitty, and I swear if he had jiggled any longer, the door would have opened gladly for him. That's when I told my sister that I was calling 911. But the asshole only said, No! Chill out! Wait! I knew she was being so stupid, but my heart was pounding like it never has before. The fucker proceeds to say, <laughs> I know you're alone. He said this with so much ease it was almost a whisper. I fucking freaked out and began to dial 911 on my iPhone. My sister backs up without removing her eyes from our mainly glass door. Mind you, we have a very clear view to this asshole. She meets me in the hallway and tells him that she is calling 911, but tells me not to do anything because he is leaving. Sure enough, he simply says, Oh, <laughs> okay and leaves. The guy even closes our wooden door, which, let me tell you, it's a chore to get the broken thing to close. My sister proceeds to tell me that they had left, but I freaking out still can't come down. We manage to go back to bed, and in the morning, we begin to make sense of it all. She tells me that when she was close to him, what threw her off was that he was fiddling with his Spotify playlist, which is a weird thing to do when you're knocking on someone's door. He most likely did this to keep his face down, but my sister caught on quick enough. We call our parents to inform them what went on, and of course, they flip and force us to notify the police, which we do, and a cop shows up to take our complaint, but can't do anything about it since they were long gone. My sister at the moment was dating a guy with a family member that had a high position in law enforcement, retired, but got him to help us out by doing some digging. A while passes and her boyfriend shares this terrifying information with us. I will try to relay this to the best of my ability since I can only remember so much about it. My sister's boyfriend had a side gig as a bouncer at the college bar street and said he spoke to the other bouncers that told him that they had occurrences that day of creepy hooded dude following young girls in the clubs and getting complaints from them, which is probably how they saw us. God knows why they did not make their move when we walked home in the dark. The retired family member was able to relay only a little bit of information since this was not an official case and he could get in trouble for doing this kind of questioning or research without a warrant or some crap. He notified us that there was not only one dude outside our house, I know he did in fact do some research since my sister's friend told us his sister managing a coffee shop in the area had a guy come ask about specific guys and if they were seen in the area. He left as soon as he threatened to call the police. Street cameras indicated that there were two guys aside from the one jiggling our door handle, waiting right outside the gate 
next to our bedroom window, most likely to jump out as soon as we open the door. I don't know what their mode of transportation was, but I'm sure they had something big enough to fit captives. He never told us the name of the guys, only that they were under suspicion of trafficking women. I don't know what possessed my sister and I to lock our doors that night. Had it been opened, the guy could have opened it and taken us. Needless to say, we are not very paranoid about locking up at night. I'm grateful things turned out the way they did instead of the alternative. So please, be careful about locking doors or walking alone at night. This shit really does happen and is very real. So, to the creepy black hooded assholes outside of my old rundown apartment getting ready to kidnap me and my sister to god knows what, let sure as hell never ever meet again. Hi. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you want to send me a story to read, feel free to do so. My email is in the description of the video. And if you want to follow me on my social media, just to get updates or maybe to talk, the links and info for my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts are also in the description. And finally, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn that bell on to be notified for upcoming surprises and remember your fear feeds me